Good afternoon, my name is Gustavo Silva. I'm assistant professor at Iowa State University and part of the field EPI team. I would like to thank the organizing committee uh, for the invitation. And today I'm here to talk about what's new on production data monitoring. So let's talk briefly talk about monitoring and surveillance tools. A lot of tools have been developed and most focus on new methods to detect to detect a pathogen. More specifically here, we'll be focused on PERS. So if we uh, look back, there has been a lot of developments and we can name oral fluids, processing fluids, femoral fluids, and more recently, uh, the tongue tips, uh, different sample types uh, to detect disease. Uh, but one thing uh, is that Almost the farm achieve stability, or depending on the monitoring scheme. Uh, not all farms perform routine diagnostic or send weekly diagnostic for uh, for diagnostic labs. And when we think about new introductions or, or recirculation of PERS virus in a herd, uh, usually first things to show up will be clinical signs, and those are related to soil feed. Uh, aborts, increase in aorator losses, or uh, with most common, uh, one of the common clinical signs related to uh, circulation of PERS-144 virulent 1C uh, was high total, high death losses in SOS. And most of the cases we're allowed to collect this data, data, and why not use this type of data and survey this data on an ongoing basis so we can do early detection of clear clinical signs and as early as we detect we can conduct early investigations with diagnostics and also adopt interventions that can be vaccinations or herd hole exposure and also perform biocontainment so for the ones that are not aware of this research that we did in the past, we monitor on a weekly basis production data and uh, m um, purse this is status. And key highlights from the works that abortions was very sensitive and 90% of the times was able to early detect compared to when uh, the farms reported the first outbreak. And that early can be as early as up to four weeks. Um, and then that farm was using green mortality. And with that, uh, with, with that research, we also found that prenatal losses was not good enough. So the first try, the first uh, research uh, results or preliminary results that we would like to share with you uh, is to establish key thresholds on fuel product and fuel KPIs. And here I'm going to focus today due of the time in a board, in number of boards, and use that and assess the performance of using these as early indicator that something is going on wrong in the herd. So the question that we are trying to answer here is what if we have uh, thresholds at the barn level that we can use to trigger investigations? So uh, to answer this question, we, are, we characterize 58 uh, outbreaks, first outbreaks using few KPIs. And again, today here, two of the time, I'm going to focus most on the weekly number of aborts. And then for that, we characterize it on a weekly basis. Uh, the number of aborts, we got their production data and we developed two different uh, uh, metrics with the number of aborts, one using the one week average and then the other using a two week average uh, to understand how those values could trigger, uh, be used to identify uh, PERS outbreaks. And then we assess the sensitivity and specific of this KPI uh, to correct and then fight first outbreak. But instead of providing a number, we develop a standardized metric that uh, would be the number of aborts per thousand cells. So uh, in this way, you can easily apply this in your heart. 
So here, few highlights of using those, and we are calling this, this the, the, as the magic numbers. Uh, here, if we look when first we can describe the baseline. So the baseline, uh, it's very specific. When you go above 1.8 uh, aborts per thousand cells, and then the similar findings, I mean, uh, we can use as low as 1.2 aborts per thousand cells. That will be five or six aborts in a 5,000, 6,000 cell farm. But with that, we are we have low specificity. So if we can target something between 1.2 or 2.1 aborts per thousand cell, uh, based on the reports that I'm showing here, uh, this indicator can be a very good indicator to trigger investigation. So high aborts, go and do something or check something out. The second, the second project that I would like to share with you guys is uh, how about using real-time uh, surveillance of production data, but also incorporating a different set of data. And here I would like uh, to, to share a uh, few preliminary results that the research project that is led by Dr. Mafalda Milomis. So here, uh, our objective is maximize surveillance using operational data, or in other words, data that the farms uh, already collected and do this in a real near, real near time basis, consolidating different data sets. And the data sets that Mafalda is working is production records, electronic salt feeding system records, and the diagnostic data. So Mafalda is merging all these in a consolidated database and then uh, running the scripts or in different models that she has been working on. And the objective is to early detection of signs potentially associated with birth outbreaks or activity of birth. And so sharing some of results here, and I'm not going to show all the, the graphs that we have, but just few, and then the overall performance so far that we have. So here, this graph, we, for each farm, we have a baseline that will be the peace, peace period, and then we start monitoring. So here, uh, I put this, this graph here just to show how sen sensitive this two is. Here we have a peace time, but then we have some spikes here. And then when we're visiting with the production system, actually it was not a purse introduction, actually it was a vaccination, uh, vaccination, a, a heart, a full, uh, sorry, a whole heart vaccination here. And then here we have actually a false positive, but then here we have the week of the outbreak in the week 49, but then we first have some signs of that something is going on by the number of soil of feed events that my father was able to gather from the electronic salt feeding system up to four weeks before uh, the farm reported the outbreak. And this was a naive farm. Similar here, we also got from the electronic salt feeding system, the average feed intake. So the average feed intake here was gathered from the weekly average feed intake of the soils in the electronic soil feeding system. We still need to do a little bit more working on this, but we can see that was able to detect one week before the date of the date of the outbreak or, or, or the week of the outbreak. Here, the abortion, the abortion, uh, we have been seeing similar results compared to what we had, we, we saw before, up to four weeks uh, before uh, the week that the farm reported the outbreak. And then the perennial mortality here, similar as well, but here we were able to detect a little bit early but we have had a false alarm as well. But in this case, in, in this graph, we are able to detect four weeks before as well. And more recently, um, Mafalda is working with the number of soils that per week, 
Uh, and then in this case here, we were able to detect one week before too. So a lot of different uh, production data or surveillance or syndromic uh, surveillance data that is already collected by the farm that we can take advantage of. So here is just a summary of the seven farms. So overall, the salt feed intake had 66% uh, of our detection. Aborts is still a little bit better, but when we think about the time to detect an average and the maximum, the minimum, the soils of feed for all these farms were able to detect up to eight weeks before uh, the salt farm reported the status. That changed, there is a lot of variability and my fault is working on that. Some fine comments. Uh, abortion, it's a good example that we can develop uh, farm specific baselines that can be used to trigger investigation. Uh, we have been incorporated in these, uh, in our two box, the use of soil feed events and average feed intake per week to also uh, be part of the monitoring and surveillance six systems. And here just would like to call your attention. We have a ASP funded project to look a little bit in these and compare to diagnostics. Uh, so we will be getting the same information and then we'll cover the diagnostics. So, uh, and then we will provide uh, and update the model on a near real time. Uh, to the producer to let them know if something is good or they need to take an action. With that, I would like to thank the opportunity, the organizing committee, uh, and nothing would be possible without this great team that I'm really proud to be part of. Thank you very much.